to Stock Shots. We're so pleased to have as our guest tonight, Kendra Todd. Kendra is the founder and managing broker of the Kendra Todd Group, a national real estate firm based out of South Florida. Kendra was the first woman and youngest competitor to win Donald Trump's smash hit show, The Apprentice, on NBC. Her first book, Risk and Grow Rich, has been an instant success, conveying the challenges and the importance of taking risks to create wealth. Kendra is also the host of the smash hit HGTV series, My House is Worth What? Listen in now as I interview Kendra Todd. Our guest tonight is Kendra Todd. Kendra, thank you so much for being with us on Stock Shots. Oh, it's my pleasure. Kendra, we'd like to start the show by asking you to tell us about your book, Risk and Grow Rich. Uh, I, a few years ago, uh, came out with a book, um, as you just mentioned, called Risk and Grow Rich that uh, tackles the topic of, of real estate to a degree, but really, really gets into the subject of risk and our relationship to risk, uh, you know, how we can use it to achieve positive goals, uh, financially and personally, and, and also why we fear risk and how we can uh, change that relationship to risk in order to uh, achieve positive results. Because risk, for some people, they thrive on it, and, and other people, it stops them dead in their tracks. When you initially started in real estate, did you thrive on risk, or did you have to cultivate the appetite for risk? I am probably, or I used to be, probably the most risk-adverse person I've ever met. I literally let opportunities just pass me by because I was so afraid to fail. Uh, you know, the way I looked at failure was you're done, you failed, turn around, go back to go, and pick a different path. Uh, when really, if you look at truly successful entrepreneurs, multimillionaires, billionaires, they have made bigger, sloppier mistakes and more mistakes than you and I could ever uh, over a whole lifetime. And you know what they, the difference between uh, successful people and, and, and people that don't go out there and live their life carpe diem? Well, people that learn from their mistakes, get up, dust themselves off, and keep on going are the ones that cultivate a successful attitude. I agree, and that's uh, one thing I've said many times on the show is, is I'm paying tuition in trading and, and making those mistakes. I should be building a good foundation because I have made plenty of mistakes. That's right, and most of them can be uh, – they, they seem expensive and costly in the short term uh, because we all seem to be – you know, not all of us, but a lot of us seem to be short-sighted. You know, I try to look long-term, but I still have my moments because I'm an imperfect person where I only, you know – see the short term, and, and we have to keep looking towards the future and down the road and realize that what we learn today um, is going to help us tomorrow. That's right, and if you can if you can benefit from that mindset, you'll be better off uh, as, as the days go by. Yeah. Well, Kendra, Peter Schiff was on our show recently, and he argued that due to the loose lending practices, we have a lot farther to fall in the housing market. Do you think we've got a lot farther to fall, or do you see the bottoming process being put in? I, I you know, it's a really loaded question, and here's here's my answer. Real estate is intensely regional, and there are uh, a few markets that have a lot farther to fall uh, because of the fact that so many people purchased on speculation. It goes way beyond uh, people you know, getting loans that they truly weren't qualified. You have investors that were buying properties as primary residences, as second homes, and really skewed the data and the numbers that were out there. It's very hard for lenders and for economists to make accurate predictions of really what the demographic of buyers has been over the last few years. What those of us in the trenches of real estate knew then and are seeing now is the devastating effect that the sheer number of speculative and so-called investors have had on the real estate market. They were short-sighted. They didn't have long-term plans. And I know that, you know, the name of your show involves the word stocks, but listen up, people. Real estate is not the stock market, and it shouldn't be treated as such, and this is what happens when it is. Absolutely, and a lot of the pundits are arguing right now that uh, the consumer in, in America is going to be in trouble simply because they can't quit using their or, or they won't be able to use their house as their ATM any longer. 
I don't know that I really buy into the fact that that many people were using a house as an ATM. Do you think that the, the relationship between consumer spending and the, the, the decline in the real estate market is overblown, or was that really the case in some of the, the markets where the speculators were very active? I don't think I, – I think they're two completely different uh, subjects and, and, and two, two very different um, points of impact on the market. Uh, the speculative purchasers, yes, a large degree of them were tapping into equity in their homes to leverage it to buy more property. But you have to couple that with your average middle-class American who drives a, a, a car, you know, that's nicer than they can afford, lives in a house bigger than they need, and was borrowing their equity to make home improvements and, and, and also to acquire depreciating tangible assets. So there are a lot of people who over the last few years utilize their equity for one motivation or another from their homes and are now finding themselves in an upside-down situation. However, there are fewer people. I mean, I know foreclosures are at an all-time high, but if you look at the total percentage of homes in the United States that are you know, at risk of being foreclosed upon, it's, it's, it's a very small percentage. Now, I heard you say in a previous interview that you, you like to debate the stock jocks. And what you're seeing in the real estate market now, do you believe that real estate will be in a better investment over the next five to ten years than equities? Yes, I do, especially if we're, we're, we're focusing in on, on ten years. Listen, I don't own, there's not a property in my portfolio that I plan, I plan on owning for less than a decade when I bought it. You have to think long term. You can't look at real estate short term. But if you look at it long term, you buy properly. When you when you add up the uh, uh, the appreciation coupled with the uh, you know interest payment write offs, the, the you know the tax incentives and tax write offs, at the end of the day, real estate always wins. But at the end of the day, is a long time from now. If you're talking a year from now. It really depends on the state of the market. Three years ago, real estate was crushing the stock market with properties appreciating 30 and 40 and 50 percent annually in some areas. For, for the next few years, it might be the stock market. But again, you just you have to have a really long-term perspective on things. Plus, I'm not a gambler, um, and I, I, I'm not into gambling on um, on human decisions. And uh, stocks are, you know, they're essentially tied to companies that are run by people who usually succumb to greed and big egos. And, uh, you know, just, just personally, I'd rather just have my house that I control, that I own, that I can touch, and that I can rent, and that I can do what I need to do with. And I don't have to go to any shareholders or any corrupt CEO, and I don't have to be out of control. Of, of The only thing that's out of my control is the market. But if I bought right to begin with, I'm going to be able to survive and thrive in any type of market. That's just me, though. Call me conservative. <laughs> now, you sound like my late grandfather who, who got me into uh, investing in stocks, but he always termed my type of day trading as gambling. So uh, that, that kind of re reminded me of something that, that uh, he would say. Let me ask you this. You're a very accomplished individual. You've written a book. Uh, you won The Apprentice. You were the first uh, woman to win The Apprentice. But you said that you prefer to be known for being a great real estate investor. Could you tell us what one of your typical deals would look like? Well, actually, I prefer to be known as um, an entrepreneurial motivator because real estate is one small fraction of, of you know, really what, what I do. And my big passion is motivating um, women specifically and young entrepreneurs specifically, mainly because they seem to be my biggest audience, uh, but, but just generally all people, to come up with um, savvy, creative, smart, uh, business-boosting solutions and really getting to the core of what drives people to turn their passion into prosperity. For the rest of this great interview, visit our website, www.stockshots.tv. That's www.stockshots.tv. Thank you for listening.